have you again on the set of uh, ABS TV uh, for this special edition uh, of our elections coverage. Uh, we are now at a time when uh, some months or, or about a year ago, we didn't think this day would come, but here we are. When we were fighting the former administration to make sure this day would come. And thought, some thought we were joking, but here we are now uh, on a, at the eve of our elections. And uh, it is nice to have you on board uh, this uh, beautiful day of uh, uh, Monday, August the 15th, 2022. Uh, I will be uh, the host of this program. And uh, the theme of this program will be the unveiling of the next leader of the Federal Republic of Amazonia. We are going to reveal the next leader of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia uh, throughout this program. So I would like for you to stay tuned and also to bring in as many viewers as possible so that uh, you can uh, experience this exciting moment in the history of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. This is what we have all been fighting for, fellow Ambazonians. This is what we've been fighting for. An Ambazonia where we can conduct our elections and choose our own leaders. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this beautiful? Democracy is in Ambazonia to stay. And I would like to invite you to share this link, call your friends, call your relatives, call your neighbors to come and experience this moment with you. You can't afford to enjoy it yourself alone. So um, we will be introducing the man of the moment. The man of the moment, that's what I call it. So fellow Ambazonians, uh, uh, I'm very happy this day. I, I could not wait to see this day and I'm glad that God kept me alive to see this day. And I believe you are equally as excited as I am because um, when we started this struggle in 2016, some call us jokers, they call us uh, terrorists, they even call us dogs and roaches. And they call us uh, two cubes of sugar. They said we were joking, that this day will never come. Here it is. And Brazilia is holding uh, its elections to choose the next leader of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. And we will be uh, uh, doing uh, a, a huge show today. The, the revealing of this candidate who has been in the making for so long. He's been restrained. He has been very patient, allowing others to give it a shot. He's not someone who is egoistic, very generous. He even won this very election before, but he allowed someone else to go ahead because he cares more about Ambazonia than himself. But throughout time, people have come and gone, and he has done what he knows how to do best, to communicate. But there comes a time, fellow Ambazonians, there comes a time in life when a nation, a people, must take top stock of where they've been, it must take, take stock of the past, take stock of the present, and examine where they are heading, and make the decisions whether to continue on the same trajectory or to make some changes. And this information will be based on the experiences of the past to ask, where did we go wrong? What did we get right? What can we do to correct the mistakes of the past so that we can forge ahead and make the better decisions that will deliver the, obje the objectives and aspirations of our people? And that is where we are today, ladies and gentlemen. We are taking stock of the past, evaluating where we are at the moment, and we will be making decisions for the future. 
and only the best decisions for Amazonia. So in, in a game of, of cards, fellow Amazonians, those of you who've played cards, I, I, we've all played cards, right? In a game of cards, there is a card which, that's normally called the Joker. You reserve it for the best moment when you can capitalize on it to defeat your enemy. I think that the moment has come for Ambazonians to pull out its joker. Because using the joker at the wrong time may not deliver the result, but using the joker at the right time can give you the edge over your opponent and give you the game at the end, the winning at the end of the game. And that is where we are today. We think we have come to a point where we need to pull out our joker and get this thing done once and for all. So ladies and gentlemen, I know that there are some who would say, oh, this joker is good at, at this or that. We will discuss that in the course of this program. So I, I'm very delighted. Uh, let me see how the numbers are doing. Uh, please, uh, could you do me a favor and really share this link? Let's let's get uh, the numbers uh, rising. We are at three something. I know we just started, but we like to see the numbers increasing so that we can uh, bring in our our special guest uh, of this evening and, and uh, introduce uh, this guest to Amazonians. Though the guest needs no introduction, but in everything. Sometimes there's the need for a restart. So uh, I would like for you to share the link, share the link. Let me see what the numbers say. Let me see what the numbers say. And let me see some of the comments, please. If you have a comment, uh, let, me, let me hear what you're saying there. Okay. All right. Share, share, share. Yes, share, Dr. Philippe, share, please. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me hear what your thoughts are about this momentous event, this very uh, beautiful day of August, when the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, in anticipation of the revealing of this great leader that uh, will take us to Boya. So please let us uh, share the link and make sure that Okay, someone says we need a, a president that does not need contributions. What do you mean by that? Uh, a president that has money, there are people who have money, but keep their low profile. Okay, yeah, th that is very true. There are people who have money and they keep their low profile. Not everybody wants to be on the limelight, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has come when we all have to come out. We all have to come out and uh, express ourselves and say exactly what we mean. And uh, it's what we need to do to, to get to Boya. One love to you. One love to you too, my, my, my fellow comrade Christian from Kumbo. There are people who, yeah, please leave me a message. Uh, yes, please. Uh, we, we, we need to get the numbers rising, but uh, in the meantime, I would like to bring in uh, the the person who will be leading this course for our candidate. I'm talking about, let me see here. He will be a very good president. Thank you, Eric Boren. Uh, I agree with you. He will be a, a great president. You know, he's been the joker we've been reserving for this very moment. and. Uh, we are going to bring him in later on in the show, but I want you to share the link so that the numbers are increasing. Yes, but not to my liking. So keep, keep sharing the link, please, uh, so that uh, we can bring in our, our joker. I should say that, say that. The, the man of the moment, man of the moment, uh, the man who will jumpstart and bring to us the much needed freedom 
that we've been fighting for for the for the past six years. We have tried others, and uh, we have not yet received. Um, we have not had the, the desired results that we wanted. So we now need to pull out our joker. Uh, I hope that all the candidates will, uh, that's going on through first. We need unity, absolutely, absolutely, we need unity. That is exactly why we have, we need to rally behind this candidate because he has the potential of doing exactly that. Okay, okay. So uh, I would like to bring in the campaign chairman of this uh, movement. I call it a movement because it's not just a campaign. This is a movement uh, to liberate Ambazonia. So I would like to bring in the chairman when, it, when, uh, if, if, uh, when the situation is right so that we can start uh, paving the way for, for our candidate to come in and introduce himself to Ambazonians. He needs no introduction. OK. Chairman Jackson, uh, you are on the hot seat. You, are, you have been charged with the responsibility of making sure that this movement, I call it a movement, this, mo this movement uh, achieves the desired results. So uh, introduce yourself and tell us exactly what you have reserved for Amazonians, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Mark Fossey. Can you get me? I can get you five on five. Ah, okay. Yes, uh, fellow Ambazonians, uh, we're here today uh, as the chairperson of uh, this new leadership that we're craving for Ambazonian. Today is the day that we are going to remember that on this day something happened. So um, we have a package for Ambazonians. And as you rightly said, this is this is a movement. This is something that Southern Cameroonians have been looking for. And thank God it is going to happen. It is just going to happen. And before we know it, people will be like, but where were we before? And that's how it's going to happen. Probably individuals will think that we were daydreaming. Because at this point, with the mistakes that we've made in the past, We've been everywhere, but we've been nowhere. And so many questions are coming up. Where do we go from here? And this is the moment after reflection, after thinking, after consultations, after talking with other stakeholders and other people that have been sacrificing enormously for this revolution, it is the moment that we do not stay the course. We don't do the same things that we've been doing. We do not continue to fight each other. We don't continue to insult each other. This is the time we have to look for that one thing that has to unite us. It is better for us to you be united and fail as a united person than to fail as a divided person because the aftermath, the, 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 the resultant force of failing as a scattered person is going to be very disastrous. Let us come together. And of course, if we come together, we are not going to, we're not going to fail in any form or shape. So, Chairman Mike Fusi, I thank you for this yeah. moment. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chairman Jackson. Thank you for uh, those words. Um, I think the key what one thing we really have to focus on during this uh, presentation will be the need. I don't know, you watched the, the rally uh, in New York, right? You saw the, the video of the rally in New York. And you, you saw the number of persons that were there. And uh, that is what we need to do. Um, we need to recreate the coalition that we had then. That coalition, we, if we have to win, then we need to recreate that coalition and make sure that Ambazonians are speaking with one voice. This far, Thank we you. have had leaders who have not been able to really, or, or they've rather been unwilling to really open up to other fellow, fellow Ambazonians and leaders to make sure that we recreate that momentum so that we are speaking especially to the diplomatic core and to our citizens also with one voice, and even to Lara Public, 
that we are speaking with one voice. So when we send out a message, we are speaking as ambassadors, not in factions. This is what uh, most of the diplomats we have talked to have been requesting. And uh, uh, we tried it with the previous administration on the SACO, urged them to go take this road to bring together all ambassadors, but they resisted, which is why, of course, uh, one of the reasons he was impeached and removed. Uh, and then uh, even right now, we are not doing enough of that. Uh, so, and that is why we need someone who who has walked the walk and and as much as he has talked, he has walked the walk, he's been there from the very onset and he's been consistent. And we need to make sure that we, again, extend hands of fellowship to our fellow, fellow uh, uh, Ambazonians so that we are marching in lockstep towards our destiny. So um, in, in terms of collaboration, what new is your campaign, what will your campaign present to the, to the, to, um, to the Ambazonian people uh, to convince them that this is the ticket they need to be on? What, what, yes. what, what, what? Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, when, when I watch the videos of the, of the New York rally, and there is that nostalgic feeling mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. running down my spine at this moment. Because it is like looking back in anger, looking back in anger. Because those are the moments we were one, but we've been so disintegrated to the point where we basically are a shadow of ourselves. So the message that is going out there is, it is time to unite and the time is now, not tomorrow, it's now. It is time to have a leader who is not his excellency, God given leader, no, it's time for a, a revolutionist, somebody that is going to roll off his sleeves and get to work. That's the message we're giving Amazonia. If you're not ready to roll off your sleeve, you're not ready to go down there and scratch the earth with your fingers, then this is not for you. Gone are those moments of people sitting in very high seats and hoping, thinking that they're already ruling nations or a nation called Amazonia. No, we are in a struggle and we are bringing somebody that is going to treat it as a struggle. And you see, we are unable to have those rallies that we had back in the days because of the infighting, people are positioning themselves. And I'm telling you that that is going to change. I promise you, and you can take that to the bank. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, talking about people who who um, see themselves as uh, the almighty leader, the president, the excellency, and they fail to understand that they were chosen to serve the Ambazonian people, not to be served by the Ambazonian people. That, that is what uh, uh, most of the leaders we have had have failed to understand that they have been, were put there to serve the people, not to be served by the people. So we would need a leader who will go down there uh, to the gutters and do the work. A leader who will be able to move around and meet those that will give us the change that we need. We, we've had leaders who uh, lived right at the center of the, the highest diplomatic uh, capital in the world. But they did nothing. They stayed in their, in their homes. They didn't get out of their homes just to make a simple step to uh, the White House or Congress to lobby on our behalf or to present our case. And I have here uh, uh, Chairman Ephraim with, with us uh, who will be helping to throw some light on these very important topics and to enlighten the Ambazonian people on the caliber of persons or, or person we are presenting to them today, what he is going to do. 
to make sure that di our diplomacy is sharpened again and that we are able to knock on every door, every door where we can find a solution. We will not sit and wait for people to come to us. We will go to them. What do you have to say to that, Chairman Efren? I, I, your audio, your audio is not on. Let me see here. Okay, I think I think I can hear you now. Are you getting me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, yeah, so I was just saying uh, thank you to you, uh, Comrade Fusi. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me, and greetings to fellow Ambazonians wherever you are, Northern Zone, Southern Zone. And welcome to this very, very, very important day. Yes, this is a day when we're going to have the outing of a candidate for the position of the presidency of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. One that is known to all and sundry, by the way. Even though he still comes here today and we talk about outing and see we're introducing him. There are many of you out there who know him as much as I do. He is tried. We have tested him. We know what he has been doing. And uh, there is no doubt whatsoever what he's capable of doing, if given the opportunity to lead us. It's a man of vigor. It's a man of enthusiasm. He's outspoken. He has a sense of purpose. And uh, like all of us, we have our personal issues. But this is somebody who never allow his issues, his domestic issues, to come in the way of delivering the goods for Ambazonia. There's somebody who fought shoulder to shoulder with over the years. And that's why he's so well known to us. We have watched him at rallies, but what just like uh, the one that we we're watching there in New York, the one you refer to, we have been we have enjoyed his presence, we've had conversations with him, and uh, I know personally, and I believe many of you know, maybe I should say most of you know, most of you are the Ambazonians, ground zero, everywhere you are. Be you in Europe, be you in the United States, be you in Canada, be you anywhere. You know who Secretary Chris is. That's how I fondly call him. That's how I have been calling him. But if you want, just call him Chris Anna. We know who he is. We have tried him. He has stood the test of time. And this is a patriot. And no one should take anything away from that. Now, um, let me leave it at this point and uh, let's listen to the next speaker. But before I do so, I will tell you, fellow Ambazonians, I come from Menemo, from the Menemo OGA. And we in Menemo know who this gentleman is. Well, let no doubt. He has come to our earth, he has visited us. He has urged us. He has given yeah, you know, I'm right, right. us to empower us. So, yeah, I'm right. Yeah. As we continue to fight this fight, we can count on him. He's only going to be a leader. He's not going to be like a, a Another speaker said, it's not going to be your excellency, the doctor, this and uh, God given and all that. It's as simple as you have always known him. And this is somebody who is ready to sacrifice. We know what he has gone through. All of us is somebody who's ready to sacrifice. I don't need to say much here. You know it. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. I would like for us to pay attention to consistency. Consistency. When you look at the, the videos that were played at the start of this program, 
and you heard what he was saying then, is very much the same as what he will say now. That is what you call consistency. There are people who, for other reasons, have tried to paint him as, oh, he sold out to a lot of people. Oh, he did this. Uh, the, the brother is this, so the brother is that. But he has took the test of time consistent from day one till now the, the 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 person we are referring to is the same person then and he's the same person now with the same passion the same vigor the same determination is the same fighter with the same courage willing to take on the enemy fearless in his determination to make sure that ambazonia is truly free Amongst all the candidates running, he beats all of them, hands down. As far as consistency is concerned, no one can say they are more consistent than our candidate. And that matters. It matters because when Ambazonians are giving you their vote, they need to know that you will not betray them. We have seen leaders who have come, they've talked the talk, but when it comes time for them to walk the walk, they fizzle out. They fizzle out. They don't deliver. Some completely sell out to the enemy. Some become traitors. But our candidate has stood the test of time. When you are, when you are when you're building your house, you want to make sure that you're building on a rock, right? You want to make sure you're building it on a rock. And that is what we are presenting to you today, a rock on which we can build so that we can march into Boya triumphantly. So, Chairman Jackson, on this issue of consistency, is there anyone out there that comes close? I mean, amongst the candidates, because we can only talk about those who are running, right? Amongst the candidates, is there anyone who can say they are more consistent than the person we are bring, presenting to them today? Is there anyone? Okay. Um, listen. Uh, first of all, let me let me, let me just cl clarify this. We are not presenting a president. We are presenting a candidate for president, the future president of Ambazonia. That's English language two or two. For those people out there that are trying to misinform and give wrong information to people. Number mm -hmm. two, we are having a candidate that we're presenting today, we're not presenting a saint, but we're presenting somebody who has a track record and is very consistent. And we, when we get into the deliberations, after we officially unveil our candidate here, let me not use the word unveil because he's not a commodity. After we officially present him here, um, we are going to give some basic information that people have not had opportunity to learn, to know, to know that there is this thing in him. There is this persistency, is persistency in him. There is this thing that pushes him all the time. And I'm not going to sit here and make it look so rosy. But I'm very, very pragmatic, and this is time for everybody in Bosnia to understand that it doesn't matter who we bring here, if we don't rally together as one person to, 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 to fight this struggle, it's still not going to work. So, But we're bringing somebody who has that ability, who has the zeal, who has a desire to st stretch his hands out, use his brains, to diagnose and know what the problem is so that when we get when we get to where we are it will, is going to be very very interesting so this is a moment for us to celebrate this is a moment for ambazonian to celebrate because it is a new dawn we are having a new dawn there's a new dawn coming to this revolution people are going to be trembling i'm telling you even the black legs call them whatever call it la republic this is the moment they would like we didn't know and this is the joker that is going to come out and he is going to do it yes uh chairman jackson as you rightly said uh he is going to do it he is the joker 
He is someone who has been tried and tested in every way possible. He has suffered personal pain because of this struggle. And he has stood the test of time. He has, he has, he has been tested and he, 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 we have seen in every way that he will never betray Ambazonians for whatever reason. Because if that were to happen, it would have happened already. Tried and tested. That is what you want to go for. You don't want to go for something that just came out yesterday. You don't know how good it is. You want someone who's been tried and tested. Someone who's gone. They said it. They, 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 the hardest you go through the hardest flames or something. Uh, that is the, the hardest you go through the hardest flames. He's gone through the flames. And he has been able to come out. Scarred. But in, in perfect condition. So. This is who we are presenting to Ambazonians today. And not that he's new, but for them to take a look at, at him again and ask why not him at this time. Given the fact that those who have come before him have not delivered. And like I mentioned in my monologue, he has been humble enough in the past. He had the opportunity of being the leader before. But he said, no, let someone else give it a try. I'm on break. Humility. And, uh, Who is that? Uh, and uh, Dr. Atienjo is here with us uh, uh, on this program. And uh, welcome, Dr. Atienjo. Uh, looking at this, uh, this quality, of consistency and tenacity, if I call it. Let me show you her number. Consistency and tenacity. Consistency and tenacity. So, um, okay. What, what, yes, go ahead, please. Uh, tell us what you know about this uh, person as far as being tenacious, being able to stand the test of time, trials and tribulations, and yet. He's in there doing it for Ambazonians. Well, um, Chairman Mike, Ambazonians and the fellow uh, panelists, uh, it's a pleasure having you on board today to introduce one of the most powerful uh, members or presidential candidate that is going to run for the elections that will be coming on September 9th. I want to appeal to Ambazonians that the test of time is something that refines candidates. Secretary Chris has been refined. You know, whenever you have a glass, the glass that we drink from, it has been subjected to high temperatures. And that is what makes it malleable for it to be formed in the shape that you want. I can say here that Secretary Chris has passed through the highest temperature in this revolution. And all these have prepared him for today. All these have prepared him for the time that we need. He is the candidate that we think that can take this revolution to the next level. And why am I saying so? I'm saying so because of his consistency. He has been very consistent from day one. He has been in this revolution delivering and has never changed his stance when it comes to our uh, the restoration of our independence. I've listened to distracted messages or me from people who said he has cut a deal with La Republic. But let me use this opportunity to advise Ambazonians that stories are heard but listen to his voice, listen to his rhetoric, and he has never changed. He has never shifted from one position to another. He has been very, very consistent. And uh, the Secretary Chris is a patriot. This is somebody who loves Ambazonia to the extent of giving everything that he has for this revolution to succeed. I listened to him two days ago 
addressing Ambazonians. Okay. I listened to him two days ago addressing Ambazonians. He made a very big statement. He said he is ready to die for the Ambazonian struggle. He has lost everything and there's nothing that is left. I have more to say and I will stay here. I will stop here. And I'm, I still have more things to talk about, Secretary Chris. But one thing that is very, very important is the consistency that he has maintained. He is a patriot and every sacrifice that he is ready to make for this country. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tejo. Um, I think uh, we don't need to take everything that the man himself will have to say. So, uh, fellow panelists, uh, fellow comrades, uh, I would like to take this moment and uh, uh, be, be, uh, because we have to analyze what uh, our presidential candidate will say and after this, after he speaks. So we will go through the rest of the items that I had prepared uh, after he's done uh, speaking. So, um, Chairman, uh, for, Chairman Mike. Yes, please. Yes, let me just say this one thing. Okay. Because sometimes we talk and we listen to the voices of people. Mm -hmm. ABS is a channel that has been devoted for Ambazonian struggle. Mm -hmm. And ABS is ready to give airtime to any other candidate that will want to come to ABS to talk to Ambazonia. ABS under Secretary Chris is a channel that wants this revolution to end anytime soon. And if anybody has listened to the calendar from the from ECA, there are going to be two presidential debates, one on ABS, one on AFTV. So I just want to make this clear out there so that as we progress, those who are joining us should understand where we're going to. This is not a joke. This is something serious. And this is a new chapter we're trying to uh, constitute. It is actually the dawn of a new day, and a day that uh, many naysayers thought this day would never come. They never believed this day would come. But here we are, uh, debating live on live TV, the presidential elections of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. Who knew? But it is as real as it is. And so, uh, fellow comrades, uh, I would not like to keep the man of the moment uh, waiting. So I have this distinguished pleasure to introduce to the uh, Brazilian people, the man who will become the next president of the Federal Republic of, of Amazonia, Christopher Forbiner and consulted with me to declare his intention to run for president of Ambazonia. He craved my support and endorsement for his candidature. But first, he wanted to know if I was interested running for the same office or position. My response to him was, a categorical no, not interested. 
I told him that my main fixation at the moment is to build my TV channel and to give it in roads into the continent. I urged him to go ahead to run and I also promised my unreserved support for him. But you probably are wondering and maybe want to ask why in the first place would Secretary Chris be encouraging, supporting and endorsing someone else to run for president when we could just continue with the current leadership of Ia Marianta? I will answer this question in the preceding paragraphs. The answers I provide are the reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I have entered this race. I had absolutely no plans running for anything, anything in this dispensation in our struggle before we get to Boya. Indeed, I have had quite a number of you in the past two years asking me to run, but I refused to. Before that, and precisely in 2018 when Sisiku was abducted in Nigeria, I had very strong support from countries and regional coordinators to take over the struggle and lead, but I choose to pass on it even when I won the most votes in their election, the election that brought in Samuel a comet circle. I had made up my mind until two weeks ago to pass on this one too. But looking at the state of our struggle at the moment, with the immediate future looking too bleak, I placed a phone call to this potential candidate comrade that I had earlier endorsed. I told him I changed my mind. I said to him, if change isn't affected as a matter of urgency, if we just continue to do things the way we are doing now, that I see the struggle going under within, within the next three to six weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not mincing words. I am going to tell you exactly what I mean by this. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. I'm not mincing my words here by any means. And this is not intended to put fear in anyone. I will explain to you exactly what I mean. Now, a very healthy picture of the state of the struggle continues to be painted to you out there. Listen to me, please. I am from within. The picture that has been painted to you isn't exactly what you are being told, isn't the truth. You are being told that current leadership has done this and has done that, or is doing this and is doing that. Let me assure you, as an insider, not enough is being done, and enough will never be done should we leave things under this current leadership. There has very little vision and it is clouded. Without a route map to pursue, don't get me wrong, please. Don't get me wrong. I didn't say current leadership lacks the will. Of course not. I said they have the will, but the ability to deliver is cured in their unwillingness to operate, to run things as a team. I get hundreds of messages from ground zero on a daily basis. And the concerns emerging from there are that no mercy, no mercy is quick returning in many towns and cities. I hear that whole towns and cities are no longer fighting. 
very little visible obs observation of ghost towns. I hear that many of our fighters can no longer fight because supplies are not put into their hands. Near G not is not put into their hands. I hear that CPDM, CPDM elite, enablers and black legs are beginning to have the upper hand on ground zero in rallying the masses. I hear that if, if K isn't taken, ground zero will reject the struggle because of opportunistic fighters who use their guns to kidnap and to squeeze out millions from already struggling in suffering ground zero. And there appears to be no leadership, no leadership to put a leg on the brakes to stop it. Moved by these and other factors which I shall be explaining to you in the course of this campaign. I told the comrade, I changed my mind about not running. But since he already had made up his mind to run, and having the support of others too, I said, however, that should he insist to run, I will yield, I will step back. But it didn't take him any time thinking what to do. He didn't say, okay, give me a day or two for me to do some consultations. He immediately said, if I am under the conviction to run, that he will step down and endorse me in his place. That's how I got here today, running to be your president. Please take what I tell you very seriously. I'm not a politician as many in this struggle have become. I'm a straight shooter. I can look at you eyeball to eyeball and tell you just what you need to know. I say it as it is. You know politicians when in campaigns like this, instead of discussing the issues or defending their records, they hire surrogates to attack others and to resort to trivialities. Trivialities that have nothing, zero, to do with a substance in the issues affecting the struggle. For two weeks, ladies and gentlemen, two weeks since I decided to jump into this race, you have seen all sorts of smears, blackmail, slander against yours truly. Perhaps the thing I'm a chicken that can be bullied down that easily. I'm not, you know that. Read the social media. They have even made attempts to link me again and again and again with La Republique. And why I still mourn FMA, my own brother. They are out there suggesting, saying, I kill him. It's unfortunate how this struggle has turned this messy. But the good thing, the good thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can trust that I will never, never bow to foulless cheap blackmail, intimidation, and calculated ploys to knock me down. Never. I'm stronger than them. And I think that's why I'm still here, six years in this struggle, and La Republic still fresh, still fresh at my mention. I have no doubt, being the longest serving person left in this interim government, and coming into your home for six years unshaken and unafraid, to tell you the truth, and confronting the Republic without fear of arrest or jail, 
J time. Many of you already know by now what caliber of a man you are looking at. This running for the leadership of the interim government for me is about rescuing this struggle, rescuing this struggle, ladies and gentlemen. And I think I have some precedence for good judgment in this struggle. I have been attacked and vilified several times in the course of six years when I did when I did things to save the struggle. But the good thing is that I have always gotten it right, and I will never be shot down through intimidation or criticism if calling things right or doing the right thing is to save I mean to set this struggle for which many people including some of you listening to the sound of my voice have lost homes lost brothers sisters husbands wives lost sons and daughters many have lost livelihood too I will never tone down or offer any apology when I call things right again what I bring to you in this address is not some political rhetoric. It is reality. It is what the current state of the struggle is. I'm revealing to you the state of the struggle you have not been told. The state of the struggle you do not know because you are not in the inner circle. I am, and I can tell you exactly what is going on there. Fellow Ambazonians, for six years that I have served this interim government, all the struggle, every moment I saw that the struggle was about to be compromised, I heard it to you, I came to you. When it was about to be sold or die down, I broke ranks, irrespective of, of whose toes were stepped upon, to blow the alarm. And it saved the struggle again and again. I come to you this moment to blow another alarm. The struggle is not in good hands. Again, I say to you, listen to my voice and tomorrow did not say do not say you didn't hear the struggle is not in good hands the future does not look promising if there isn't change and i mean immediate change this struggle may not last may not last for the next three to six months Again, I mean it for the next three to six months. I am not a prophet of doom. I'm just giving you the true picture. It will crash. Again, listen to me. If there isn't change, immediate change in that matter, the struggle may not survive the next three to six months. The signs are all there. It will crash. We are hearing how La Republic of Cameroon is gaining momentum and Ground Zero is about to get back to normality. You see the elite, the so-called elite, and you see them on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, being an insider, I do not see a rescue, an antidote in the current leadership. If we allow it to prevail, I bet you three to six months, this thing may be over. I will explain to you what I mean. If you like, go out and attack me for saying these things. But that's exactly the situation, the picture. Those who are inside know exactly what I'm talking about. If they want, you can go ahead and vilify me and live in denial that this baby isn't going to die in my hands while I am still part of it. 
The situation is bad. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me out. Hear me out. When you have a leader, when you have a leader for six months who cannot raise a meager hundred thousand dollars in six months, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, the real figure, the actual figure is around $93,000 raised in six months. In six months. That is half a year. You raise only $93,000. When, when you launch a struggle saving campaign called AROF, upon which you hope to raise enough funds to fund the struggle and you hope that 5,000 people are going to subscribe and then only 70 people even not even up to 70 people ladies and gentlemen not even less than 70 people have have subscribed where where and how in your mind do you think the same leadership will generate funds to sustain the struggle, to sustain ground zero. Tell me how they are going to do it without a plan, with a vision that is so clouded. How are they going to do it? That is one of the fundamental things that will crush this struggle if change isn't affected immediately, immediately. Our current leaders, they do not travel and they do not want to travel. It doesn't seem like they want to at all. When they want to travel, I mean, when Sisiko was brought on, ladies and gentlemen, we saw him Christ crossing Europe, America, bringing in much needed funds. Even Sako, though he couldn't travel to Europe, not being a citizen of the US until much later in the struggle, he was making the rounds in the USA to raise funds. Though, though, much of it went unaccounted for. They draft. They draft. Was a good idea that was bringing in lots of funds directly into the counties and the LGAs. Even though it was equally mismanaged and embezzled but they were good initiatives the current leadership brought on brought on change that to what they call AROF and AROF ladies and gentlemen doesn't have up to 70 subscribers how do you expect this war to be paid for how do you expect that to happen it will take a miracle and for which uh, i don't see one coming their way because to you for you to receive a miracle you must know how to sow a seed and that seed in this case is ability to do things right even when it is based in europe leadership is based in europe it cannot hold a fundraiser meeting anywhere with Amazonians in Europe. They have not done so for six months, not once, to raise funds. Nothing. America injects the most amount of money into this struggle. You would think that the president, seizing upon the, upon the support, and the good way that Ambazonians welcome her with. Rush to America, spend one or two weeks Christ crossing the country to raise funds. Of course not. It hasn't happened. We can understand her difficulties affording time to travel, being that she is a full-time teacher but you will think that during vacation periods like this one that they will program themselves to tour Europe and to tour America for such 
fundraisers. It didn't happen, despite several appeals made to them or suggested by cabinet members, even uh, advisors. Now the vacation period is over. They haven't been to Europe, not to America, to raise a dime for the struggle. Now tell me again, how do you fund the struggle without raising the money? When for six months you cannot raise up to a hundred thousand dollars, and you launch a campaign expecting five thousand subscribers and the only thing you've got are uh, less than seventy people, how do you fund? Are we not heading for a crash if that continues, ladies and gentlemen? It isn't as if they can learn or change and do better tomorrow. No, not at all. Again, I am speaking as an insider. When I say the situation is bad and need urgent change, I say so because given what we know, there is no way, no way current leadership can turn things around, especially when it comes to raising funds, which is what matters in the diaspora. They live in Europe, both the president and the vice. They live in Europe, but have absolutely, absolutely no base, no base, no support base in Europe. Not even in the United Kingdom, where the president lives. If you live in the United Kingdom or Europe, I believe you can testify to what I'm referring to here. How do you, how do you rule a country when you have been ejected, removed almost from every European forum, including your own home country? How can you even go to them for funds when you do not belong, ladies and gentlemen? fellow Ambazonians. This fundraising thing is very, very critical. It remains very critical because it is the soul, the soul of this struggle and the exclusive responsibility of the diaspora in this struggle. The day we run out of money, the day we cannot raise and send money from the diaspora, you agree with me, this struggle is over, the fighters give up, ground zero moves on, and our fallen, our fallen heroes and fighters and people would have died in vain. Is this what we want to see happen after six years of sacrifice? I am running for president because I have no doubt I have the ability, I have the capability and the expertise to raise money than require, than the, even more than the required funds to sustain the struggle. Throughout the six years of this struggle, it isn't an overstatement to say categorically that nobody, and I mean nobody, has raised money for it as I have done. People trust my candidness, my objectivity, accountability, and transparency. And when I show up, they give. They give. Unfortunately, again, the previous regime mismanaged most of the funds. And if you are saying, Sector Craze, if you can do this, why can't you do that too under current leadership? My answer will be where leadership doesn't have vision and cherish team work, not much, not much can be done, can be changed. I will spare you much details about the financial state of the interim government and of course the struggle hoping that they brought they bring it up during the debate 
for discussion so that we can all face the issues that determine the success, the victory that we need in this struggle. One major thing we need to see happen in the struggle is fraternity, fraternity amongst ourselves and Bazonians, and unity or collaboration within our movements or groups. This is one thing, ladies and gentlemen, that will save this struggle, unity and collaboration with fraternity among us as individuals. I just talked about the pitiful state of our fundraising. One of the reasons current leadership cannot raise funds or build AROF subscriptions to the level where it can sustain the fighting on the ground is because so many people have been alienated, alienated from the fold, from within the interim government. When people are alienated, the base shrinks, it reduces, and that affects what comes in in funds. I'm strongly of the opinion that the interim government needs to open up bring in people who have left back into the fold we need to do that now the bigger the base the larger our fundraisers leadership should stop seeing other ambazonians as a threat to their positions it ought to see them as assets and as resources for the struggle. That is what it should be. We should be embracing every group, every movement too, that can prove to Ambazonians that it is committed, though they are committed to fighting for nothing but for a free and independent Southern Cameroons. And that doesn't necessarily mean absorbing them into the interim government, no. I have held discussions with some other group leaders and they are agreed that if we should come together as stakeholders, it is very possible we can iron out our differences and figure out how unity and collaboration can be forged among ourselves. I am going to do that. I will champion that from the first day of my administration. This is something that current leadership is avoiding to do. How I know it, how I know it doesn't want to do it is because I personally have spoken to some of the leaders out there, leaders of different movements, groups who believe in a free Amazonia and then carry the message to the president. They should choose to refer them, all their leaders like her, she choose to refer them, to send them to some non-existent collaboration committee in the interim government. It is hard time, ladies and gentlemen, that the interim government leaders at any given moment stop treating treating other group leaders with complex the leadership of the interim government at any given moment should be able to pick the phone and call a leader in the other movement and say comrade we have this idea what do you think comrade let's sit down and talk in not sending them leaders in your status to some committee that you set aside. You should talk directly to them. That is what unity and collaboration should be initiated and I promise you ladies and gentlemen that is what I will do. The interim government should be humble, humble enough to pick up the phone, call other leaders in other groups to have a conversation, a conversation without feeling like he or she is above the other leaders. 
current leadership hides behind Tim Ark and wants everybody to believe it is building bridges, whereas it is a mere smoke screen. How do you say you are building bridges that refuse to respond or pick a phone call from a fellow comrade and know their leader in his own right just because he wouldn't address you as president? Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. We need to start coming down these high horses in titles. Madam President, Mr. President, Your Excellency, Commander-in-Chief, blah, 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 blah. We are still fighting to restore the country for God's sake. This is a revolution. This is a struggle. You don't even have an office for the president. Ladies and gentlemen, let's come down this high horse in titles, please. After six, after September 6, I promise you, when I come to you as your leader, the leader of the struggle, I'm begging you, never address me as president, your excellency, or our commander in chief. Refer to me as Comrade Chris, Comrade Chris. We are all mere comrades. These titles are beginning to climb into people's heads. All the one is to be addressed as Madame or uh, Mr. President. Your Excellency, Commander in Chief, and they have very little to show for it. Very little to show for it. We need to bring our people together. As a matter of urgency, the interim government needs to grow the tent. It needs to expand the tent. It needs to seek unity and alliances that can increase our diplomatic power and financial resources. We have to do this, ladies and gentlemen, to sustain firepower and to push the Republic to Cameroon further to the war. I can do it, I promise you. And I want to do it really bad. I am ready for it. I have a track record for championing unity in this struggle. I'm sure you still remember the famous uh, cool memo, right? Cool memo uh, written by Chris. I know you remember that from the hand clappers so-called the cool the supposed cool memo it was supposed to have taken over hijacked the interim government and hand it over to some other groups i'm sure you remember what you were told isn't it of course as usual they twisted everything the memo basically indicted the interim government for alienating other groups and actually suggested that genuine efforts must be made towards collaboration. I started championing collaboration, unity, as far back then. Of course, many of you all who are outside will not know this, will not understand it because Chris is seen to be a hardliner, isn't it? But listen, I am a strong proponent for unity, collaboration, and after September 6, you will see it when you vote me to become leader of Ambazonia. I wrote the memo advocating for the in, to the interim government to open up, open up, and I still stand by it. I still stand by it. We have brought some of these people on ABS. Even though we differ in approach to things, I believe that though we may disagree in approach, but, but for, us, for as long as we all agree that independence is the only alternative for Ambazonia, we should still be able to listen to one another and if possible, be able to sit down and do things together. And 
talking about ABS. Now, this is for all the candidates out there. Ya Marianta and uh, Ma Gertrude Kiso. For the record, I'd like to announce that ABS, AB, I mean every candidate, every candidate in this election we have the opportunity and for as much as they want to come on and express themselves talk about the ideas their mission campaign and address the issues and to act for voters support campaigns are asked to reach out and work out schedules with the producers here at abs we are giving everybody an equal opportunity so do not go out and say you are not allowed on ABS. I own ABS, but democracy and equity entails that it be opened up. If I am opening it up for people from different groups to come on and express their opinion, it will be injustice to deny any candidate the opportunity to come on. So please, if you want to come on ABS, call us and we will arrange for a schedule for you. What we will not want to see on ABS is attacks on any candidate. If you want to come on ABS, come and discuss the issues. Come and answer questions. That's all we want to see, fellow Ambazonians. I cannot address every issue about my campaign today. But God willing, I shall be coming on live to take your questions and to explain them to the best of my ability so that you have complete clarity as to what I hope to achieve as your leader. But I did like to address one more important thing before I leave, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you who appreciate what I have done in the past six years as spokesperson for the struggle I've, have said, Secretary Chris, Secretary Chris, you are very good in communication. You are born for it. If you leave, if you leave it to become president, communication will die. In fact, you just want you just wish I stay there. Remain your anchor man and make a good team player with whoever is president. I hear you and why I appreciate your opinion and take it actually into consideration. The problem is that every time we have chosen a leader in this struggle, he or she became a lone wolf and they built a wall around them. They built a wall around them. There is very little, very little consultation and teamwork in what you see them do. Every, I mean, even when suggestions are made, they die at cabinet meetings. Sarko's presidential advisors, for example, they all deserted him, complaining that he hardly consulted them on anything. It will also surprise you that the present leadership, since coming to office, since coming to office, has not summoned a single meeting, hasn't sum summoned a single meeting with her advisors until two weeks ago when they had one forced upon them by the committee and lo it wasn't good it was fiesty what kind of leader put together an advisory committee lead the government for six months and has no meeting calls for no meeting with his advisory team ladies and gentlemen think about that who does that so the question is 
Who is the team listening to? Who is advising the president, ladies and gentlemen? That is the problem. That is a problem. Where ideas are not taken into, where ideas are suggested but will never be taken into consideration or implemented, there is nothing you can do but seek to do it yourself. And that is why I am running. I won't be putting myself up for all of this, ladies and gentlemen. For all of this trouble that this thing entails, had we a team, a team leader in the real sense of the word, a leader who cooperates and consults with a team, we have not seen one since. And you should not be fooled. We do not have one now. That's the reason I am sticking out my neck. I want to make the difference. I want to set an example of what leadership ought to be. That is what I want to do. And trust me, you will see it after September 6. So coming back to the question of communication, I ask you, haven't listened to the real state of the struggle. Which of the two are of priority to be saved in your own judgment? Should we save communication and lose the struggle? Or we save the struggle and keep communication? Your answer should be as good as mine. We need to save the struggle first. Let me assure you all. Let me assure you all. I know exactly how big my shoes at communication have been. I have taken time to ponder over the kind of person that replaces me. And should I win your confidence to snatch the struggle from decline? Trust me, I will appoint a smart, articulate, and intelligent team player into communication. A good and smart communicator with me at the helm will be a plus and not a minus. Such a combination can only get our communication power more impactful and that is what I plan to do. There will be no gaps at all and no laughs. Fellow Amazonians, I am the type that wants to make things happen. I am the candidate that wants La Republic du Cameroon genocide leaders to look at and see a principal revolutionist, a revolutionist titan, a revolutionist in the order of African heroes, liberators, like the late Honorable Sam Njuma of Namibia. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, Samora Mache of Mozambique, John Garang of Southern Sudan, Jonas Savimbi of Angola, the Ikemba of Inewi, I'm here referring to the late Chief Emeka Odumogwe Ojoku of Biafra land. Of course, not forgetting Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso among many others. They let their people in arms struggle that ultimately led to some of their freedoms. Make me yours and you will never regret you did. I promise you. This revolution as some like to call it needs a strong and a listening person. A brave and courageous leader. A leader who is not afraid of the ICC, International Criminal Court. We need a leader who is not scared with, a, with levels such as terrorists. A leader who is not afraid to go to jail if need be. A leader who will poke his fingers or poke his fingers into the eyes of the Republic to Cameroon and call its bluff. Above all, we need a leader 
who was not afraid to die, a dime will save Ambazonia. Let me address La Republic of Cameroon using this opportunity. After September 6, you will hear Ambazonia in a way you never heard before for the past six years. If you were told the war is ending, and you are going back to doing the same old, same old business in the southern Cameroons. You are mistaken. You are mistaken. We will smoke you out and hunt you both in Ambazonia and in your own territory, your own country. My advice to all Ambazonians living in Yaoundé, in Douala, Bafusam and Chang is that please start planning how you pack out of those cities. Please listen to the sound of my voice. Start planning to pack out of those cities. Same goes for all Francophones, all Francophones living in Amazonia. Your time is up after September 6. The time we said fraud must leave. Francophones must go and yet did nothing is over. The time we said Francophone businesses must pay to live in Ambazonia and did nothing. That time is over. The time we promised a lot to do and did nothing. That time is over. Count it on me after September 6. We will blow down, ladies and gentlemen, we will blow down, and I mean it, everything, everything that matters in Yawunde, in Douala, in Bafusan. The damage in this world must be collateral. Our people cannot continue to bear the brunt of this war if it is called war. If it is war, Cities and towns in La Republic of Cameroon must also bear the brunt and count their debts as we are counting our own. We don't have to wait until they burnt down our hospitals before we go burning down their own hospitals. No, that will come to an end. We no longer have to wait until they burn down our schools before we burn down theirs. We no longer have to wait until they burned down our market before we burn down their own market in Yaoundé and Douala. We no longer have to wait until they kill our people in the streets of Kumba, Mamfe, Bamenda, Kumbo before, ladies and gentlemen, we kill the ass on the streets of Douala, Yaoundé, Bafos and Chang, and you name the rest. This is war. This is war, and we have to learn to act like warriors and speak the language of war and be at the offensive at every given moment. At every given moment. We must, we must make Yawunde and Duola to look like true war zones. Like in Syria, like Palestine, Iraq, Ukraine, and you name the rest. Yawunde must have that shape fellow Ambazonians. The time that we had armchair leaders who will not leave the confines and comfort of their cities to fight for Ambazonia is gone, is gone. The moment is too risky to have such leaders anymore. Leaders who don't want to travel, leaders who cannot raise money, leaders who cannot knock diplomatic doors that dispensation is over. It must be over as we will lose. The Republic of Cameroon is out there claiming victory already. You watch them on their televisions salivating. They believe they are winning. And the leaders are not responding. The leaders are not saying anything. We have very limited time. Listen to the sound of my voice. We have very limited time to reorganize and to face what awaits a political transition in La Republic du Cameroon. We must be ready. 
when that happens, we must be ready. We need to urgently, urgently start knocking doors, diplomatic doors, ladies and gentlemen. And I promise you, I promise you, if you trust me with the leadership of this struggle, I promise you, we will secure, we will secure international support to prosecute this struggle. I promise you, I know the doors I can knock. I know those I have knocked already. I know the places I have been to. In fact, in this interim government, I think I am the most traveled uh, cabinet member in this government. From the days of Sisiko up to today, I know exactly what we can, uh, who we can meet and what we can do. The problem we have had is, again, you bring ideas to the table, you meet people and you bring ideas to the table, everybody salivate about it everybody says what a great idea wow they all exclaim and it dies if i can explain to you classified uh, uh, classified places where i have been to come back into the interim government and suggested let's do this let's do this everybody agrees but they do nothing they do nothing and that is one of the reasons i am into this now because sometimes when we suggest and talk and talk and talk and talk and it is not being done what do you do step out stick out your neck and do it that is why i'm running in this race we have to knock doors and do so more than ever before in anticipation of that eventuality a political transition in yawande i am the only person who have done it in the past. I will recruit, I promise you, I will recruit men and women, smart, intelligent, articulate, experienced, and resourceful adults who will join me to have the job done. And for those of you qualified to vote, I promise you, you shall not have to regret after it i ask you i ask you for your vote and thanks for listening to me Uh, fellow Ambassadors, welcome back, welcome back. I uh, think you listened uh, together with me uh, to the most qualified uh, presidential candidate who is uh, presenting himself uh, to be the next president of the Federal Republic of Ambazoni. And uh, uh, it was a fiery speech, especially to the, uh, towards the end. Uh, promising what he has to do, especially to our enemy, La Republic of Cameroon. I'm sure they're listening. And uh, and uh, the first question I would like to have our uh, my panelist uh, uh, discuss with me, uh, given what he said towards the end, uh, Dr. Tianjo, Chairman Jackson, and uh, Chairman Ephraim, are you there? Please, 
Uh, come back and let's digest uh, this uh, speech. I'm here. Uh, break it down. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here too. All right. That is good. That is good. So the question is this. Given the speech you just listened to and the reaction that may be coming from the Republic of Cameroon and looking at the pool of candidates that we have, who do you think the Republic fears right now? Who do you think the Republic fears the most among the candidates that we have running for president of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia? Who do you think La Republic fears right now? Please tell me, Chairman Jackson, you are the campaign uh, uh, chair. You All tell right. us Let how you feel. Yes. How do you feel about the presentation by your candidate? How has he performed? Well, yes, yes, already he made the benchmark, and uh, and we and and, and 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 something before I took the decision to to support him. Uh, in, in this quest is because I asked him some very tough questions and like the part of the collaboration and La Republic would not want to hear that we are collaborating because you understand that is that is their, 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 their modus operandi trying to divide us. Divide they divided us. Yes. yes, they divided, they divided us back at home and they already infiltrated the diaspora and they're dividing them too. So if you have somebody that has an uh, antidote to that, it's going to send uh, some chills down their spine. But let me, before I come back, let me clarify something. Let me put something out here to the public. Um, this campaign with Sir Chris is going to be a positive campaign. We are not going to be insulting anybody. We are going to be telling Amazonians what is going to change, what, how we're going to do things differently. They are not going to, we're not going to have any name, name callings. But one thing is for sure, if you put any wrong information out there trying to uh, give as a smear campaign against our candidate will respond in a timely manner. I can guarantee you for that. But I'm saying that we want Amazonians, there's so much stress, people have gone through a lot. Let's, let's stay positive, let's give them the hope that they desire and the hope that they need at this time and and the ability to bring people together so that we can fight this revolution so going back to your question la republic the one person they don't want to see is sector chris you know that well you know when he went on air and passed that ultimate my brother lady that was uh, arrested in Buya, you know what happened i can name a series of other things because they understand that when he speaks, there are people listening. Because these same person that listen to Sector Chris, they go to La Republic with the information they got from Sector Chris. When he gives interview to VOA and other international broadcasting corporation, that is heard all over the world, and La Republic knows the impact of communication. They know the impact of it. So, um, I will come back. Let me give chance to my colleagues to speak. Uh, yes, I'll come yes. back uh, talk about on something very important about. Yes, we, um, we, we will come back. We will come back to yes. that. Um, and uh, Chairman Ephraim, um, he talked very. I think he was very passionate towards the end about uh, taking the war across the, the, the Mongol across the bridge and into La Republic of Cameroon. And uh, I think we are beginning to do that already. But from the sound of his voice, I think he wants to intensify on that offensive. Because we understand that for so long, these people have had the comfort of marching into our territory and causing carnage on our people, burning houses, shooting and killing just anybody from the young to the old. They, 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 have, no, they, they have no difference in who they target. So how, how, how do you think uh, both our people and the Republic will receive this message? Thank you, sir. Uh, again, uh, this has been a wonderful talk, a wonderful presentation of what this person has in mind and what 
all of the people that in the past have been presidents or call them leaders should have had in their minds. This person is ready. This person, I fondly call Secretary Chris, and I will learn to call, not call him Secretary Chris, I will learn to call him Comrade Chris, as he has requested. This person is a person you can count on to take us in a more vigorous manner. I will tell you that our leaders have been lackadaisical. They just lack lustre. I don't see anything being done. Only having or mostly having pleasure in being called Your Excellency, His mm -hmm. Excellency, Her Excellency, and the like. And what did he insist on? Call me Comrade Chris. I have sat with them and talked over or about the death of various people at home. We have cried together, and I say again, we have fought shoulder to shoulder. I've never heard an AK. And when I say we have fought, you understand what I mean by we have fought. Putting in a hard earned money. I bet you La Republic is trembling. And they know that we are about to embark on a different page. We are going, we're turning the page. We're turning a leaf. So far, we have been doing this thing like people who have not we have not much to lose. Well, this person that we talk about, we all know. What's, he knows what's at stake. We all know his personal sacrifice. Yes. And at this point, I can tell you, without any fear of what, that if you're counting families that have lost the most in this fight, his family comes up first. And I have no doubt that you sacrifice everything. My fellow Ambazonians, our presidents, our leaders in this fight have not acted like the snake that they should be. And they are saying that if you don't act as a snake, if you are a snake, you don't act as a snake, People, children will use you to tie firewood. As long as you are the thing that you are, uh, you are a rope, and they use you to tie firewood, and that is what has been the case so far. All right, and, thank uh, you, thank. You. Okay, I'll, I'll come back. Okay, thank, thank you. Yeah, you come back. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Ephraim. Uh, the thing is this: uh, following on, on on the point you just made there, he said, "Do not call me president." But what we have seen with our previous presidents is that they have carried this thing, this title, president, on their heads, and that has become uh, a, 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 a something in itself that they they, 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 they they enjoy being called president so much that they, they, they feel that is that is what it means to be a leader. That in order to be a leader means when you're called a president, that's it. There is no sense of urgency when it comes to seeking those solutions that will truly liberate Amazon. That is what I'm trying to say. That you don't, when you when you look at our previous uh, leaders, they don't they don't they don't uh, embody that sense of urgency that Amazonians need to make sure that this war is won so that our people can have some rest. And that is what I would like uh, Dr. Tenjo to take a dig at. Look at the passion that this candidate is not president yet, so we have to be careful about that. He is a candidate for president. This candidate for president has this passion. You can feel it from his voice, from his uh, facial expression. And uh, this is what Ambassadors want to see. And I, and, I, and, I, and I believe that Ambassadors will respond positively to this message. What do you think, Dr. Tenter? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I'm, very, I, I'm going to be very candid here. When it comes to the candidate, Chris Anu, running for the president of Ambazonia, or Federal Republic of Ambazonia, he is a compassionate man. 
This is a family-oriented person. He is a patriot. And in his speech, I would describe his speech as thunderous. This speech has reached La Republic with the sound of a thunder. And they, are, they know, they are aware that things are about to change. Now, the era has changed. Time has changed. But looking at the speech, I just want to recall what uh, Chairman Ephraim has said here. Simplicity is the order of the day. Mm -hmm. You saw the way Secretary Chris appeared today. I was, I was taken aback because he dressed so simply to tell you that he is ready. Chairman, the manager, the campaign manager mentioned at the beginning of the speech, he said, we want somebody who can roll the sleeves of his shirt up. Secretary Chris came today with those sleeves rolled off and ready to start working for Ambazonians. He has worked so hard in this revolution, and every Ambazonia can come here and testify what he has given. He has given his all and is able to give what he doesn't even have. The last thing he has is his life. And uh, Secretary Chris made a statement that he is ready to die for this revolution. So you can imagine the kind of advice that he is ready to make. He also mentioned something about finances or the financial situation of our revolution. We do not have to go out there and be deceiving Ambazonians that we are fine, giving false promises. We need to come up with a financial plan that can resurrect this revolution. We in Ambazonia, we in the diaspora, we in, in all places, we need to work hard to come up with a plan that is going to suffice, a plan that is going to, uh, to succeed, a plan that is going to be sustainable to our revolution. So going back to him, his simplicity, and the way he presented himself today, this is the kind of leadership we want. Titles. Titles have deceived us for so long. A lot of people think that titles, titles, when you are addressing the president, his excellency, her excellency, uh, Mr. President, commander in chief, those titles don't do anything. Titles have deceived us for six years today. Secretary Chris has brought an end to titles. And this is one of the most important things that we have to address so that people are not brainwashed. We need to tell the people the truth. And I'm glad today. Our candidate has come out. The time for the truth is now. We are going to, to go to all the fora. Ambazonians will know the truth about the agenda of Secretary Chris and what he Thank has you. to provide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tenjo. I think the key word here is humility. Humility. Yes. And if I have to take you back to take a look at all the great leaders of this world that we know. Look at all of them. There's none of them who is the chest beating kind who say, me, 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 me. No. Look at Mandela. He wasn't a proud man. He wasn't a proud man. Look at Sankara, a humble man who went around and played uh, games with his people. Look at all the great leaders we have in this world. Uh, 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 Gandhi. Margot Fuli. Margot Fuli who just died. Margot Fuli who just died. Yeah. yeah. That is one of the virtues of a great leader. You have to humble yourself. You are there to serve your people, not to be served by your people. That is the difference. Amen. And that is what he brings to the table. Now, there are a few topics I want us to examine, which he brought up during the course of his discussion with Amazonians. And one of them is diplomacy. He says he's willing to knock on any door. And we know that our previous leaders, except for Sisiko, I'll give Sisiko that. Sisiko was a great diplomat. He went around, met people, and that is how he had the support he had. But since Sisiko, the other leaders were sit tight leaders. Sit tight, didn't go anywhere. They made no effort to meet anybody. How are you supposed to liberate your people, meet the people that are supposed to help you. If you just sit at, in your home and each time you sit on TV 
and you want people to call you Mr. President. So he, he has promised to make sure that he leaves no stone, no, no stone unturned as, as far as diplomacy is concerned. Again, Chairman Jackson, can you expatiate on this topic of diplomacy and what he has promised to do for Amazonians? All right, thank you. Uh, diplomacy is just one of those aspects that are involved in uh, in this struggle and probably in the other um, uh, struggle of uh, of this nature. And so, uh, we before before um, we sat down to organize this um, um, uh, event that we are having today, we look into the various aspects of uh, this revolution. We do a, a thorough assessment to see how we're faring. And uh, if we go in, uh, in order of importance, uh, we place uh, 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 ground one, ground zero as number one, then number two was diplomacy. And at that aspect of diplomacy, it was totally anemic. Anemic in the sense that, number one, we don't go out to demonstrate, so our voices are not heard out there anymore. Uh, number two, and most importantly, we do not knock the right doors. But we have persons, individuals, who have been doing that at their various countries and regions. But there is no, there is no um, concise and holistic approach given, coming from a, the central authority or, of this organization to do that. So much so that we are acting everywhere, but actually we are actually acting nowhere. And I was personally ashamed, and I believe you too, and most of us, and every any African or any person in a struggle like us, when a personality like Thibaut Nash made a declaration on a, a Telemundo that nobody has approached him. For over five years that we're in a revolution, that we are, he has not had any official um, um, approach from, from this organization. I mean, to me, it was shameful because I thought we were doing things, but when I heard that, uh, it, 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 it troubled me so much. So that's why this issue of diplomacy is very, very important. I mean, we cannot, we cannot overemphasize it, uh, Chairman. And if, yeah, if... Yeah, yes, uh, you are right, uh, uh, Chairman Jackson. And uh, I, I think he made uh, Tibo Nash actually made that declaration right here on ABS. Yeah, uh, but I wanted to right. add. Yes, I was. I was going to add that. What brother, you know that the only person that finally got in touch and is creating some links on that aspect is Secretary Chris, and he did it as communicate as communication secretary. But you heard him say today. My children can come home with all the suggestions that I can do things better. If I do not implement it, we are going nowhere. If the, the directors and the cabinet members can make any proposal, if the chief executive does not execute, it goes nowhere. That's why he has said, I made all these proposals, I brought all these people in, I brought all these contacts in, they did not go anywhere. I've decided to do it myself. Thank you. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, and to and just to follow up on your last point there, I think that's that's one thing that some people out there are saying. Oh, Secretary Chris, why don't you just stay on as Secretary of State of State for Communication? Just just continue doing what you're doing in communication. But the thing is this: okay. <laughs> he has done this for the past six years, right? Six years, he would do all the work, do all the work. They bring the, they bring the decisions for the person who is at the helm to implement, and they fail to implement. Then all the hard work he did goes in vain. I have we yes. know that he has traveled the world. He has been to foreign countries. I don't want to name them for diplomatic reasons, made contacts. But when he comes back with all these ideas, they look at him as he is being over ambitious. Even when Sisiku. Sisiku and the Nara 10 were arrested. Guess who was there? Seti Chris went there. I mean, talk about courage. He went there to Nigeria when the, when the situation was very unsafe because he could have gone there and himself be arrested. 
But that did not deter him from going there to find out what exactly happened with Sisiko and the members of his cabinet. He went to Nigeria. He went, and the person who was leader at the time sat there and did nothing, absolutely nothing. But it was Sisiko who took the risk to fly to Nigeria to find out what exactly happened to our leaders. That is the kind of person we need now who will be fearless to go wherever the answers will come from to liberate this, our country. That is who we need. Uh, Dr. Tiento, uh, about this virtue of someone who is fearless, he's determined, he's willing to face the bull by the horns and to make sure that we, we, uh, we, we, we knock on all doors that have the potential of giving us the answers we need. What is your take on, on this candidate as far as that policy is concerned? Well, I, I would say here that um, thank you for that picture. <laughs> thank you for that picture. This, this is one of the diplomatic missions that we had in Washington, D.C. And uh, it was a very, very productive one. And all this was done thanks to Sector Chris. Sector Chris is not only fearless, but an aggressive patriot who has left no stone unturned when it comes to diplomacy. I can call them and name them to you. I don't want to because he, as a, press, a future presidential candidate or president, has an aggressive diplomatic pro, uh, program agenda that is going to be unfolding. So you're going to see a lot of things happen in this revolution. But one thing I would like you to know, Ambazonians to know is that about 80% of any diplomatic or all the diplomatic ventures that we have tried or we have undertaken, Secretary Chris' signature is there, very bold, meaning that he has traveled all through the world and has brought, exposed our revolution to other countries. He's been to Somaliland. He's made arrangements. He has spoken. He knows the president of Somaliland, the minister of foreign affairs of Somaliland. He knows all those who are connected in Somaliland. He's been to Europe. He's been to all sorts of places on diplomatic missions. And remember, he is not only tied to Somaliland, there are other countries that he has created links with. When he was in Nigeria as a journalist, he interviewed most of the warlords, the fighting forces that fought in Liberia, Sierra Leone. The leaders of these countries, Secretary Chris knows them. These are diplomatic opportunities for us. But all this I see on Facebook or a fora, people writing, you had these ideas. How did you not bring it into the government or to the government that you are serving? And why did you not bring them up? You only want to unfold this agenda because you want to be president. Lies. There are a lot of things that we are going to be saying, we're going to be talking about in the days ahead. We are going to disprove all these people who are misguided. When they tell you lies, we need to disprove them. This, this is a man who has the connections, I mean, meaningful connections. And people who say that he should remain as Secretary of Communication, please, we should not be blind. That is a leader. We have seen leadership in him. And he is one of those people that can take us, make us, to take us higher. We need to allow him, we need to give him the chance to prove what he has been proving as a Minister of communication or sexual serial communication. He has done it and we need to pat him in the back and say, move to the high office and deliver. Thank you. That is the that, most that, is. that we want for this revolution because he is a fearless person, he's a patriot, and he is that person who is not going to sleep until something is done. And that is yes. the kind of person we have seen today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, yes. Dr. Tanjo. Um, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, is that Chairman Ephraim? I was going to uh, come to you anyway. Chairman Ephraim, uh, in order to be an effective diplomat, you must be able to travel. 
You cannot be an effective diplomat just sitting on one spot. And that is what he brings to the table. It's not that he's going to start now. He's been there and he's done it before. So I want you to, to expand on the importance of a leader being able to travel and meet those that can deliver the results and pursue Please. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, before talking about that, let me go back to something, to somebody or to a name that Dr. Tenjo mentioned. Mm -hmm. Maguli something, the president, the former president of Tanzania. Yes. John we Mago require, Mago. we need a magulification, excuse the term, of Ambazonia. That person who does not sit on that high horse and wants to be called Mr. or Madam President. And if you don't call him that way, the atmosphere becomes poisoned. He has said it himself. He's not afraid of the ICC. He's not afraid of being cursed at. And I personally know him as somebody that's very thick skinned. He listens. But do not think that you're going to cut down his enthusiasm by throwing a few words at him. Behold, a leader, an epitome of courage. By the way, if you can communicate well, it's not a negative for a president. A president should want to speak to his people and lead them. Of course. Yes. Communication is a, it's a plus. It doesn't become something that, oh, no, no, is reserved only for the communication ministry or for uh, the Secretary of State for Communication. No. Fellow Ambazonians, this is a plus. Now, talking, to, uh, talking about the ability to, to travel, my people, we need help. We need help from wherever we can have it. We know what this world of today is. These certain decisions are made in the corridors of power, United Nations, Washington, D.C. We all know it. Go to our grandmothers at home and they will tell you, that player they call a United Nations, they never talk, they never talk. We want to hear them. But they don't just sit and talk on their own. That's yes, not how you have to make them. Diplomacy. We need somebody who can go, talk to them clearly, forcefully, and tell them this is our situation. He can tell them the history of Ambazonia. He can tell them clearly, in no uncertain terms, what we have gone through and what we are going through and what we are determined to have and that we're going to fight. You heard him say until the last man standing. This is not a joke. Behold yes. a leader, Comrade Chris Anno. Yes. Yes. Like you rightly said, like you rightly said, communication should not be viewed as uh, uh, something that is reserved Witness. for those in the communication department. As a matter yes. of fact, communication is a, a, an essential uh, prerequisite for anybody who wants to be a leader. If you are a leader and you cannot communicate, it makes it very difficult for you to get your message to your uh, uh, citizens or whatever that may be. So if you look at all, it doesn't mean that you have to shout, but you have to be able to get your message across. So it is an asset for, of all leaders. And that's what people need to understand. You shouldn't just say, oh, just because you're a communicator, just stay and do communication. No. On the contrary, it puts him ahead of other, other candidates because he has that virtue. So uh, uh, let us go to the next uh, uh, topic I would like for us to talk about. Bringing Ambazonians together. Recreating the coalition we had in 2016-2017. How do we do that? You have to reach out to people. Humble yourself. Stop referring to yourself as Mr. President and the others have to call you President then you can, before you can answer them or talk to them. Humble yourself. Approach your comrades as comrades. Putting Ambassador first. 
That is what we need to do. There are people out there who are just waiting to be reached out to. But previous administrations have refused to do it. We will not do this by ourselves. And besides, if one ambassador is free tomorrow, it's, it will be for all of us. Why then should we limit others from taking part in the liberation of our country? So, uh, Chairman Jackson, uh, this is a very important aspect of one of the building blocks of this campaign, bringing Ambazonians back together. Tell us what you have planned. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, as I said in my opening statement today, the only reason why I jumped into the backwagon of this uh, uh, campaign was because Secretary Chris promised to me that that was going to be his central message. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for that, I would not, because I was sick and tired of this fighting insults, uh, people settling scores, and, and this translates to the fighters back home and they start fighting among themselves. So, um, Secretary mm -hmm. Chris, you guys all noticed that he has brought, he has reached out to certain individuals, even on ABS, and it was not comfortable to the structures that uh, he was working with because they thought he was bringing people that were not thinking and talking the same language with them. And that really or put him... Or come and challenge their authority. Yes, yeah, yes. And, and of course, um, people should understand that uh, any meaningful way to deal with people, you have to accept uh, criticisms and challenges. Even your own son and daughter in the house, sometimes they ask you some difficult questions. Not because they hate you, it's just because that is the nature of things you have. Because sometimes when they get those questions, you can make, make corrections. So um, this, 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 the candidacy that we are talking about today, uh, that is going to be uh, the main focus. We have to bring Amazonian. And I pray for every Amazonian out there and people and the leadership and, 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 uh, and uh, leadership in various uh, groups to accept, to come together, because uh, that is the last hope we are having. Because I, I see, I don't see where, if we don't unite, I don't see where we are going from now. And let me use this opportunity to thank um, the work that has been done by some other persons. I mean, like uh, activists, these are people that have been doing a lot of uh, work at their own personal expense. Uh, you see them go live, try to explain the position of things, and we really appreciate what they are doing at this material moment. And I, I, I equally want to say here that the way this leadership is going to conduct itself with collaboration is actually meeting with these various people that are doing what in this revolution. We have promised to meet them, meet restoration uh, council meet uh chair people meet um uh country and regional uh leaders and uh, meet various groups that have a stake in this revolution meet individuals that are out of the realms of this ig talk to them sort common grounds this is the way it's it's, it's going to move forward mm -hmm. and the last point i want to clarify here is that uh the issue of i heard people saying that Oh, he's good as, as communication secretary. Well, you are saying this because you only knew him as communication, communication secretary. Okay, okay. If yeah. Secretary Chris, if he preaches here, you will say, oh, no, he's good as a, as a preacher. No, he should not be communication secretary. If you hear him sing, you will say, oh, no, I think this man should be a singer, not even um, a preacher. <laughs> And if you hear him articulate, you will think that he is an... Uh, uh, so this person is more talented. And this is the time for Amazonians and the struggle to take advantage of it and make good use of it because he is more talented. It's God-given and we can't take that from him. And this is our joker and this is the time to use it. Uh, yes, I think that is that is that that is a, a very interesting way of putting it, which makes a lot of sense, there, Chairman Jackson. Uh, Can I add um, something uh, there? Uh, sure, sure. 
Uh, people tend yes. to think that just because you are good in one thing, you are confined to that thing only until you've tried something else. Uh, some of us uh, speaking here, people would think that maybe we're journalists or anything. No, we are, we are not journalists, but we, we just speak on something and we do it. So, Sector Chris is a guy with a, a lot of talent, multi talented, as you said. And until we see him as president, we will not be, on, be able to understand what a great uh, uh, leader he can be. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Tenjo, you were trying to say something, please. Yes, uh, I just wanted to add something to what um, uh, the campaign manager has just said here about how uh, collaboration could be built. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other day, we were celebrating the life of Phil Marshall of Ambazonia. And I was taken aback when I saw uh, Kingsley Ashu came in and represented his group. And mm -hmm. then I saw a representative of the uh, of Siseku through um, his vice president, Yeriba, present there to express their condolence to the Anus family or Fabinus family. And they said they came there as Ambazonians. And they came there to show their, uh, their, their collective, uh, I mean, to show their Come fellowship with the IG. Mm -hmm. And I, I became so much, uh, I was taken by these people for what they did. That was uh, extending a hand of fellowship to our own, uh, to the IG, that they should understand that we do not only celebrate we can also mourn together so Cedric is somebody from his speech the candidate chris anu is somebody who is not going to sit back and send some other people to go and negotiate collaboration or to talk to other collaborators he is going to lead the course he is going to be at the forefront he is going to be the person to read to them say you know what this is what we have this is what you have. Let's put these ideas together and work as one. And his collaborative approach is going to be multi multi-dimensional. <laughs> what I mean is that he is going to use every form of method, every method that is possible for us to forge unity. Because I have been in meetings, I've also attended some kind of a, 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 a diplomatic me meetings where the big word that comes up is unity 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 and we cannot afford to be playing the game without that 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 joker the joker of unity is what we want so we need a collaborator to work with other people so the chris is not only a communicator he is a collaborator look at mm -hmm. when abs was started Many people came to ABS, people that had gone missing. You never heard of them again in this revolution. Mm -hmm. But he was able to invite them, say, brethren, come on board. Let us work together. And these people were very happy. They came in. What else do you need from a leader? A leader is somebody who should bring people down. A leader together. A leader should be somebody who can go out there and take the first step before asking mm -hmm. others to help. You, As a leader, you don't just go and sit. And then send people, delegate, delegation. You don't delegate things like that. Diplomacy, forging collaboration, you have to take the lead. So that when other countries see you, when other people see you, they see you as somebody who is leading the flock. Yes, and to that point... Uh, was leading the war, the war in South Sudan. He was always at the head. He was always at the big, at the, at the, at the, at the uh, in front of everything. He negotiated all those things. So we cannot go and create institutions just because we want to pile up all those mountains of bottlenecks in mm -hmm. order to build and um, make a, 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 a bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah be a great person in the middle. You need to penetrate all these layers to meet you as a leader. No, a leader is out there to serve people, not for people to serve the leader. That is exactly. what leadership is exactly. all about. And exactly. Secretary Chris has shown it to Ambazonians. He is a selfless man. He has given all 
to these people, to Ambazonians. He has communicated, he has worked in the communication department. He has articulated our story everywhere and they know about our story from sec to Chris. He has done it and done it selflessly. He has made the rhetoric. He has made it very clear to La Republic that he is there. If he is in that position, he is going to create mayhem there. And it is take his word for that. So we should not be people who are trying to play tic tac with people who are killing our people on the ground. We need to be. Then another thing that I would like to talk about is the openness. A leader who is out there to build collaboration, you must be open, open minded. An open minded leader is that person who is ready to listen. You are ready to listen even from a fool or listen to a fool to give you ideas. And then you take these ideas and see how you can build on as a leader. Secretary Chris is that person that can listen. And only a good yeah, listener I, I, can build collaboration. I, and to follow on that point, let me just add this. Um, in order for you to really have a reaching out that will, that will make meaning uh, to those whom you are trying to approach, you have to be willing to accept your own shortcomings. Because in this struggle, when we started this thing, we didn't know what it meant to be in a struggle. And mistakes have been made. We have all made mistakes. It starts from there, a recognition that we all have made mistakes. But if we are willing now to say, but where did we go wrong? What can we do better going forward? And be willing to approach your comrade don't sit there and expect people to come to you. You make the initiative. You set the pace. Be the pace setter. Approach the other person and say, fellow comrade, let's, let's have a meal. You sit down, and in the course of that meal, you will see all those boundaries we had created between ourselves will start to melt away. Yeah. That is how it's supposed to be done. But if you sit there and say, come and address me, President, before I talk to you. It will not happen. It will not happen. So we need to, first of all, be humble enough, first of all, to acknowledge what we did wrong before asking the other person to acknowledge what they did wrong. You have to, first of all, acknowledge what you did wrong. That is what we need to do. So, uh, uh, Chairman Ephraim, it seems you are trying to say something there. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. There was something burning, burning. That I need to say. Okay. Uh, my people at home yeah. say the river snakes because it is alone. The river goes meandering from side to side because it, go, it walks alone. If you work with your people and listen to them, you they straighten you. All of us complement each other. By complement, I mean, we, we finish each other. I have a strength, which unfortunately is your weakness. You listen to me and say yes. That's the way to go. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. One unfortunate thing I will tell you, my fellow people, my people, my fellow panelists. One thing that we have noticed with our past two presidents is that after they were chosen as president, they got themselves into a cocoon that became impervious to advice. And uh, only they mattered. Oh, they and a handful of other people. And the rest did not matter. It didn't matter what you said. It didn't matter what you said. What is important to them is what they believe what they believe in, and what their immediate people, the people who are very close to them, would, would tell them. Mm -hmm. So we have to leave this behind. Collaboration. Talk frankly. Express yourself and be able to say what you think. Is there anybody who's listening to this broadcast who doesn't now know, if you didn't know in the past, that comrade Chris, is the person who will tell you what he thinks. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, he's open to correction. I am telling you, those of you out there listening, listen to my voice. 
as uh, Uncle Mar often says, listen to my voice. He will listen to you. It doesn't mean to say, you go to him and say, okay, no, let's just leave this thing and be uh, friends with the Republic. I will say, okay, okay, that's a good idea. No, no, sir. No. no, he will not listen to that. He will not listen to that. He has one thing in his mind, the freedom of our people, our sovereign people, our oppressed people, our colonized people at home. People who look like they're sandwiched between two forces and don't know which way to go. There is an answer to their questions. And the secretary doesn't say, okay, now vote for me and sit back and allow me to do it. No, no, please. He says, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, let's do it together. I will lead you while listening to you to the promised land. This is what, this is what I've understood. He's not going to say, well, it's me or, and a few people and maybe Chairman Ephraim and Chairman Jackson and, and it ends there. No, it doesn't end there. Come on board. Have the faith. So many of us or so many people have lost faith in this. Please, those of you sitting out there and listening to us, please. Chairman Chema Ephraim, Chairman Ephraim, there is a question from uh, one uh, of our viewers who asked here if uh, Secretary Chris has shown humility, just as I said, has he shown humility? And I'll say yes, and I'll quote him one example. We remember that at one time, Mark Barata made a statement that if he had a gun and there was Paul Bia there and Chris, Chris yeah. he was going to shoot St. Chris first, right? Yeah. But was St. Chris humble enough to go talk to Mark Barata, Mark Barata and even bring him on the show? Yes, he did. So to you, Sama, I say yes. He is humble enough to do that. He's done it before and he can do it again. So I just wanted to clarify that point. So, uh, Chairman Jackson, if you have something to, to add to this collaboration uh, topic before we move on to something else. Now, let's move to something else. We, we have to okay. develop this as the campaign uh, uh, goes on. So, we, we're not going to okay. do so much on now, it. There's now, still so much. One, one of the early topics he talked about extensively was fundraising. That we don't have enough money coming into our coffers to prosecute this work. Of course. If we don't have money, they won't be, we won't be able to do anything. Uh, we'll just sit there and, and just hope and wish that things will happen, but nothing will happen. We need to be able to raise funds. Again, the ability of a leader to go around, meet his or her people, motivate them, encourage them to raise funds, make the right connections, have the right structure in place for fundraising and making sure that the funds raised are judiciously used. Not just making sure that you're thrifty, but making sure that you use them the best way to, 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 to have the best bank for your buck, as I say. So this issue of fundraising is very, very critical. Yes. Dr. Tendro, yeah. I know you've had oh. some great ideas out there in terms of this topic. I'm not telling you to put them out here. But okay, yes. Can you tell us whatever is safe enough to say here? In, yes. In terms um, of we, the need for fund, good, a better way of fundraising. Yes. Um, we are just from, we have just graduated from the topic of collaboration and we got into finance or fundraising. You know, with collaboration, you are able to amass that human capital that you need to raise money mm -hmm. and the reason why we are broke as a government now our account is on the minus is because of the fact that we need to come up with good ideas that can actually enhance the population rejuvenate the interest and the donorship of this revolution and that is what is lacking right now just imagine the plan that is in place. I really love Dr. Abongwa, the President Marianta and Dr. Abongwa for what they have done. They have done their best with the ARO fee. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what happened is the way it was executed is the issue. Mm -hmm. This is how this program came up. They launched the ARO fee project 
over and over. And when they launched it, the same people donated. They went now to counties and got it moved from one place to another, the same people donated. They went now to departments, the same people donated. Mm -hmm. Don't know fatigue, keep it. So you don't want to bring up an idea of uh, a funding idea that is not sustainable. They have done their best and we really appreciate them because without what they did, we would not have, because they took over with nothing. But one thing that we are appealing to the people is that this candidate, Chris Arno, has plans for an aggressive, robust, ambitious financial plan, which is going to come through the collaboration that he intends to build. He, needs, he intends to be the driver of this bus that is going to bring people on board. And then people are going to collaborate. The love for donorship or the love for donating and contributing for our revolution is going to be rejuvenated. So that is very, very important. So we need a sustainable financial program. Let me tell you something that makes us, because when we are talking, some people are kind of misguided and they don't have a clue of what is going on. We have raised some money during this uh, five months of transitional government. That money is good, but not good enough because when we had some diplomatic missions, the first question they asked us was, do you have a lobbyist? We said, how much do they pay a lobbyist? A lobbyist will charge you 100000 a year, 150000 a year. You need to have, why did, why is Somaliland succeeding today? Because they have a lobbyist in Washington, D.C. They have a permanent representative in Washington, D.C. And they have in other places. That is the capital of diplomacy, whether you like it or not, Washington, D.C. So what is going on is we are not able to raise money to secure a lobbyist, to secure somebody, a permanent representative, and then we cannot stand. So we need an aggressive plan that is going to take care of all this because we can fight what we like. We can buy one million RPGs which are not even working and go and keep in ground zero. Nothing is going to work from there. What we need is that we have to invest our money intelligently. We put where it is going to pay dividends. The dividends will be the result, results that we get from that money. When you take money and buy things that do not produce any result, it is a waste. Okay. Because okay, I, I, I appreciate I appreciate your comments on that. Um, for the sake of uh, not trying to spill everything out here, let's let's uh, let's move on. Uh, and uh, I would like for us to talk about uh, transparency, which has been something that has been pushed by some as being a virtue of uh, the current uh, government. We, we will not say here whether. We are transparent or not because we don't have any any evidence uh, to say either way or not but what what is important is that uh, I, I want us to make it clear to Amazonians that this issue of transparency is something that this government at this point we have made mistakes in the past and we trusted people too much and they failed us but we now have a structure in place which will not allow anyone to come and do that to us again with such impunity. So, and, and I want you, Chairman Jackson, you being uh, the campaign chair, to give us uh, an idea of what the campaign intends to do. First of all, to educate Amazonians on the fact that St. Chris, especially, is one of those who has stood for transparency in governance more than any other cabinet member. And I say so because even during the last administration, where there, was, uh, there were allegations of financial uh, impropriety, he is the only member of cabinet who subjected himself to an audit. Even the president, refused to go for an audit, but St. Chris went for an audit and they found nothing on him. They could not find any dirt on him because he was quickly clean. So when they talk about transparency, he epitomizes transparency by the way he conducts his, his business, by the way he conducts himself. 
He does not get involved in shady deals. He can refer people to be dealt with by the interim government, but he does not get himself dropped with uh, things that are not clean. So uh, I, I just want you to expand on that yes. and tell Amazonians yes. why they should have confidence in him when it comes to transparency. Yes. So, um, you know, we are just touching some of these uh, issues uh, superficially because mm -hmm. throughout the campaign, we are going to develop these things because there is so much substance and so much education that we need to give to Amazonians and uh, supporters of Amazonians. But let me let me say this. Uh, let's look at transparency per our context. Um, it's going to be different as the word transparency from the dictionary uh, meaning. So what I mean here, what I mean here is that we are going to, uh, we look transparency per our institution it, uh, where it starts. It doesn't we don't talk transparency where it ends. It, we start from where it starts. Uh, before you make a decision to acquire this, you have persons that have to be consulted and work together. Then you move now to the face of whatever you want to do. You still have individuals you work to you work with, and then you go out there. When you come back, now you'll be able to be to, to be transparent because al along the way you carried a pool of people with you in that process. You don't you don't sit, decide, and do things by yourself and then come and report to us that this is what I did and you call that transparency. So I'm just want to be very, very um, formal here and uh, trying to give you uh, the organigram that is going to put in place uh, in a world, in a structure that uh, people have to be involved in a process. And then when it comes to accountability, you have these people that can stand and testify and vouch for what was done and when and where. And mm -hmm. I, I, I will just leave it at that because oh, we still have so much to talk about this. In other words, accountability most of the time has to start from the top. It's just yes. like the father of the house. If you don't yes. maintain discipline in your household, it is, it is bound to be chaotic. So you have to set the example. And not just set the example by doing it yourself, but by holding those under you accountable when they are doing things that are not correct. If yes. you allow them to get away, that is why La Republic Cameroon is the way it is. Because the person there doesn't care, anybody does whatever, they steal however um, amount of money they want, and nothing happens. He is going to be different because he's someone who likes calling people out for wrongdoing. If you're doing the wrong thing, he will not shy away from telling you. So, uh, uh, Dr. Tenjo, um, linking that, the need for accountability and fundraising to our military offensive, which needs resources to fund it. Because you heard him say that he is not going to just limit our offensive within our territory. That it is time now for La Republic to feel what we've been feeling. But in order for that to happen, we also need to be able to raise the necessary funds to get the resources we need and do the things that we need to do to achieve that objective. Uh, can you link these two topics together? Yes. Uh, you know, the results of any financial engagement in a revolution like ours gives you the level of transparency that you can talk of. So what the presidential aspirant has just said, the candidate Chris Anu said is that the war is going to expand, which means we're going to spread the war and take it over to La Republic so that they will feel the pinch, they will feel the pain that Ambazonians have been feeling. And this is not just going to be done with empty words, it's going to be done with money. So what, mean, what it means is, he is having a very powerful and aggressive, ambitious financial uh, uh, plan, which is going to raise money. And this money is going to be dedicated in secure channels or through secure channels 
to the impact zone. What I mean is that it's going to be directed for the impact that it needs to be that needs to be created. And which means that our boys are going to be more activated in this in, in, in this in this in this uh, in, in this struggle more than ever. And once they're activated, it will mean that results are being given. And Secretary Chris or the, or the candidate Chris Anu is going to do this with the with the collective effort of ambazonians stakeholders who are going to be key players in the way the money is going to be disbursed what do i mean by this there should be a, there's going to be a defense uh, a, a defense structure that would actually see come out strategize and come out with potential uh, potential targets and potential events that are going to be undertaken and this money will be directed to these causes. Fundraisings are going to be organized and money is going to be contributed and the money is going to be directed through the Department of Finance and Defense and other stakeholders to make sure that it gets to the right channel. Now, with the refugees and prisoners on the ground, the structure from the HHS is also going to be enacted that would actually take what it is, what, what is involved with these populations and then channel the money directly so that the refugees themselves are going to be the ones sending the message that we heard from the president. So it, our accountability is something that you need to use the action, the results of that action to prove it. Accountability is not about the word that you use accountability, accountability. He, you made a statement here, Secretary Chris is the first cabinet member who went in for an audit mm. and the president the former president refused to do that so yes. accountability is in a nutshell is about the results <clears throat> that are uh, because when you go and tell people on the phone you tell people on zoom that contribute money we want to undertake this we want to undertake this once you are when you are coming back to these people to ask for money you need to tell them that the money you contributed last time this is the product this is what happened this is what happened that is going to motivate the people and that is what exactly. the candidate Anu uh, stands for. And his ears are on the ground listening to Ambazonians. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, and let, let us let us tilt the, to the military offensive again. I think in order to achieve the objective that he has set, uh, uh, on, on, it, it, there is a need to reevaluate what we have done this far and see what has worked well what has not worked so well, and see where improvements are needed. We have to reevaluate our strategies so that when we are investing, we are investing in those aspects of our defense that will yield the most benefit. And even if reevaluate our operatives on the ground and see what they are doing wrong and why that is happening, and, and, and then know how to link the right operatives with the right material to deliver for us the goals and the objectives that we seek to achieve. Uh, Chairman Ephraim, uh, I would like to, for you to share us your thoughts on, on this uh, without revealing anything that could be sensitive to anyone. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I would, I've been a chairman of an LGA for a few months or years. And I can tell you this. There's nothing that alienates your people like keeping certain things or keeping everything about what money is contributed for within only certain ranks. The electromotive force for contribution is letting your people know what I told this money was meant for. We did it exactly as I said. But should you fail, let them know where the errors were made. Nobody trained me as a chairman. Nobody trained any of you as a chairman. We learn as we go. I'll tell you, the, our, our fight has been emasculated. By emasculation, I mean the genitals, the testes, let me say that it should be said, have been removed from my fight. I was just hopping around, not knowing what to do. 
Comrade Chris said, broaden the tent. Broaden the tent. Our people are out there crying. Then look at what is happening from the fence. And they cry. And they say, this is happening, that is happening. This is not how things are. Or broaden the tent and hear what everyone has to say. That is the electromotive force. That is the force behind people say, I'm going to stand up to be counted. And they will stand up to be counted. They know when you give them your word, they trust you. And when something doesn't go as planned, you will talk to them. You will tell them that this is what happened. Well, I will say here, there's a caveat. As much as can, because there are certain things that cannot be said out there. Uh, there are certain things in my in my with my people that I'm sh I'm sorry. Yes, I yes, quite, of course I, not. I, I, I but yes, 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 of course. Unity is strength, and uh, mm -hmm. we we need we need as much unity as we can have. More than the ten, let everybody know that he counts, and let everybody stand up and be counted. The moment is now we have languished in mediocrity for long enough. Mm -hmm. And the, that mediocrity is said, that, that pace has been set so far right from the top, and it percolates mm -hmm. down. This time, I believe that is out of the window. This yeah. time, Comrade Chris, he said it. Don't hear it from me. Hear it from him. He said it. I shall broaden the tent. We have seen people on the TV, even to the displeasure of some of the some powers that be that they have coming to the tv by the way that's not a government TV, i mean a, abs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these people on the screen here these panelists have all dipped their hands into their pockets to make it stand we know that it's good for us communication talking to the world including to la republic and telling them you will hear us and exactly. very often they are us. And we have to be very exactly. careful with these people who are carrying, who are going through this burden, running the bushes. Our heroes who are born this battle, this struggle with their blood. No. As our anthem says. Do you always sing that anthem for just for window dressing? We, we, we all sing it. We talk to our heroes who have borne the battle, the burden, with their blood. They have blamed yeah, yeah, uh, the uh, 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 And it's time for us to say, we are standing behind you, and that is what Comrade Cree is going to do. Uh, thank, th yeah. thank you, Chairman Jackson. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, we have just about seven more minutes to, to end the program. Uh, but I would just like for each one of you to um, just maybe 30 seconds, say something about this phenomenon which has impacted our struggle of late. I'm here referring to this issue of black legs. Black legs. Or to be more specific, traitors, because that's what they are. This issue of traitors. Uh, Dr. Tianjo, just 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. What can we do about okay, these um, traitors that are, uh, are disturbing our struggle at this time? Well, um, one thing is very clear. If we do not defeat black legs, we are wasting our time. Black legs must be dealt with. The, uh, the appropriate punishment must be meted on them in order for us to prevail. So black legs are everywhere. We have black legs embedded in villages. Black legs mm -hmm. embedded in cities, black legs amongst our boys, black legs in every in the diaspora is even the worst. Yes, in the some yeah, of these yeah, black yeah, legs yeah. do not. Some of the black legs do not even know that they are black legs. They have been recruited and they are black legs doing what black legs are supposed to do, but they don't even know that they are black legs. So we have to educate yes. the population, so that each and every Ambazonian will know whether he or she is a black leg. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, my yeah. idea here is is a war that we need to we are fighting two enemies in this revolution these two enemies are black legs and uh, la republic so we have to deal with the black legs black legs is something that we can deal with internally and get rid of that 
and it will be very easy for a swift war. That one, we are going to do that. But black legs is very bad for our revolution. They have taken us, uh, we have Jeff regressed because of black legs. Uh, Chairman Jackson, uh, black legs, the canker worm that has uh, invaded or infested our, our struggle. How do we extricate ourselves from them? Um, uh, in, I'll just simply say, not good for us. That's it. They're not All good. Right. They're not good. So we have to deal with them. We have to get rid of them. Uh, They're yeah. not good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chairman Ephraim, Black Legs. Uh, these are, yes. uh, we call them what? Worms. That must be pushed. Yes. What a canker what, worm. What do you say? Just, yeah. just a few. What a canker worm in our midst. And I will tell. I regret to tell you here that some of these people who have become blacklist are former fighters. Mm -hmm. Some of them think, well, you're not listening to me. You are sitting over there and only doing that, only doing that while we are suffering. And then they start telling on others. And then some of our people at home, please, my people in Ambazonia, listen to us. War is difficult. We didn't declare war. What was declared on us? And we're fighting back. These children were fighting and making errors. And you don't throw, there's a saying that you don't throw away the child and the dirty water, something, something like that. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to take the child, clean up the child, correct the child. Do not take him into the den, into the den of the land. Don't take that child and throw into the mouth of the crocodile. Please, that's all. let us have this corrected. And I will tell our fighters, please, those people at home, you are people, you are neighbors, those are Treat your eyes. Well. They say the eyes of yeah. the occiput. The yeah. eyes of the occiput. And you dare not, please. This is the reason we are fighting. Our people, you can't go again. So please, stop being blackless. Times have changed. Oh, times are going to change. My belief is that Comrade Chris is going to be our leader. And I tell Thank you, you. things will not be the same. Even those yeah, who yeah. think they should become blacklist, your days are numbered. Number. Number. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, now, the clock is counting down. Just four more minutes to go. Um, I would like for you to take 30 seconds each to make your final thoughts, and uh, we'll end the show. We know that the, the, the campaigns have just started, so we will, we'll be coming back uh, several more times to bring our message to Ambazonians as to why Comrade Chris is the best candidate for Ambazonia. Um, Dr. Tenjo, you go first. Okay, uh, I would like to tell Ambazonians, look straight into your eyes and tell you that we are very elated today to have had Comrade Chris announce his uh, intention to run for the presidency of the high office of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. And uh, we cannot, we don't want to belabor a lot of issues here. But things that I would like you all to know here is, he has been the firebrand that we have in this revolution. You can see everybody will testify that Secretary Chris or Comrade Chris has been the voice of this revolution. And why don't you transform or take this voice and go to the head office or to the high office and make use of it so that we can move forward, not move backward. He is a credible person. His credibility is, 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 is strong. He is a patriot. He is somebody who has the power, who has the energy to dispense. He is somebody with connections. He has a true mind of a patriot, a fighter, mm -hmm. and he is going to take us to Boya. The campaign has just Thank been you. launched, and we are about to start, and the campaign, we shall prevail. And we count on all Ambazonians to see what is about to happen to our people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Tianjo, and thank you for coming on board. Uh, Chairman Ephraim, uh, your final thoughts, please, uh, as brief as you can. Yeah, so we all heard Ambazonians on Ground Zero, whether you're on Ground One or wherever, you all heard the comrade today, the person who spoke, who made a speech. And uh, this is what I heard in that speech. Roll up your sleeves and let's work together. 
-hmm. It doesn't say, go on your knees and adore me. Roll up your sleeves, let's sit at the table. Look at what has been happening. It is like, I mean, when you wash your clothes, look, imagine those grandmothers washing their clothes at home. And then they spray like that and take a look. Where is it clean? Where is it dirty? You, you, you correct what you did. It is time to embark on a journey of correction and taking forceful steps ahead. And we need a leader that listens. A humble leader. And that is what I've known this man to be over the years that I've known him. I call him Secretary Chris, but he wants me to call him Comrade Chris. I will call him that way. Yes. He places himself at my level. He places himself at your level. All of you there at home are people. He places himself at you actually. So call him, talk to him, or talk to somebody else who is in touch with him, but he is open. There are no connection. Just go straight, talk to him. But please make sure, don't think that you're going to tell him, oh, come on, Chris, let's just leave this. He will, again, he will not listen to that. So, okay. on your marks, get set, let's go. And let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Ephraim. Thank you for coming on board. And uh, Chairman Jackson, this is your campaign. Your final thoughts, please. Well, uh, my final thoughts are that um, uh, we promise to run a very civil uh, campaign. Let's debate the ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Let's understand that after the election, we're still going to be the same persons. We are still going to work together. I. I am not one of those persons that I think we should we should fight over elections. I understand that in in, a, in normal circumstances, elections do not unite people for the most part. But this is a process we agreed. Let's do it do it as civilized persons. Let us teach the world that what the Indele and the Funchas did, we are still capable of doing it. There was a smooth transition. There were things that they did, and they were most most of them were primary school teachers. So let's let them understand that we can do this and do them better. And I will say that we are not going to be responding to all the insults that are out there, but we will beg everybody after they must have insulted that they should take a chill pill. Let us come together as one person and fight this revolution. Uh, I'll end with these few words and very encouraging words about our, 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 our leader that we're presenting today. Comrades, Southern Cameroonians, wherever you are located, this is the moment, the moment that will be remembered this moment will be remembered, I promise you. The moment we have been waiting for. On this day, at this time I'm speaking to you, with everybody present, this is happening, and surely it is happening. Join me and this campaign to look for a way forward under the candidacy of Secretary Chris or Comrade Chris. The joker we have all been waiting for, That's Secretary Chris is here. The one and the only. Together, Ambazonia will be free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Jackson. And um, my final thoughts before we end the show are these. You see, the reason we are in this election is not because there is a problem between Comrade Chris and the current leader. No, it is because he simply feels that he can do a better job of delivering the hopes and aspirations of Ambazonians for a free and independent and de democratic country. It does not mean that this is supposed to be uh, uh, a, a, a case of a fighting or enmity between the, the various candidates. It simply means that he believes that he has a better chance of leading Ambazonians towards their ultimate independence. Now, 
the international community will be watching this election. And for so long, some have said, oh, we don't just want another uh, Somalia or something like that. This is our chance, our opportunity of demonstrating to the international community that we are mature enough to call a democratic election, transparent, free, and fair, declare the results, and the various candidates accept the results. And if there's need for a handover of power, that it is done peacefully. This will go a long way to help us in our democratic outreach as we start going our way. And this is the one message which I want Ambazonians to take home even today, that the importance of this election is to demonstrate to those who have had doubts about our ability to rule ourselves, that we are indeed capable to have a free and fair election and for the candidates to be mature enough to accept the results of that election and hand over if need be. That is what I want you to take home. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard from Comrade Chris and he's asking you to give him a chance to take us to Boya. He has demonstrated in every way his conviction, his values, his tenacity, his courage, his humility, his ability to talk to uh, 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 people of varied opinions. You have seen it on his shows. He's brought on board people of varied opinions. Even people who have insulted him, he's brought them and said, brothers, let's talk. Let me listen to what you have to say. Let us now give him the chance to deliver on this promise. Thank you all for listening. And, uh, for, and for watching, and I hope you share the message you have received here today so that all Ambassadors know that they have a potential candidate who is willing to deliver on the dream of a Federal Republic of Ambassadors, free of the occupational forces of La Republic de Cameroon. Thank you again, and it was nice having you on the set of ABS TV today. And uh, the campaigns begin now. Thank you and good night.